As you might have guessed from the title, this is a bit of a double episode, because I will be reviewing both versions of Sleuth. I'm going to be reviewing them in chronological order, so if you just want a review of the 2007 version, skip ahead a little bit. I suppose I should start by saying I have not watched any actual play by Anthony Schaefer, if that's how you pronounce it. And I don't think I've watched another movie written by Harold Pinter. Other than that, this is not my first exposure to the people who made these films. So here goes my spoiler-free review of Sleuth from 1972. You can tell that it was based on a play, but in the good way, meaning it's all about character and dialogue. The camera doesn't do anything particularly fancy. It doesn't try to wow you with special effects or other post-production work. Which is not to say that the editing leaves anything to be desired, because it doesn't. Or for that matter, that this is poor the shot, because it isn't. No, it's driven by just a few people doing brilliant acting and portraying extremely credible characters that get fleshed out immensely over the course of the film. Kane and Olivier are both masterful in their parts. The film is about 2 hours and 20 minutes long, which is about 50 minutes more than the newer one. And you can tell, and I mean that in favor of this original one, that extra time is all spent on development of character and plot. Every single frame of the film is jam-packed with content, and yet it doesn't overwhelm you, and the very deliberate pacing and the very deliberate pacing just enhances the drama. Every time something happens, it's immensely effective. The tension is constant and thick. The one thing I would say... <coughs> the one thing I would say is excessive and, indeed, negative in this is the music, which is a tad overdramatic. However, it is nowhere near enough to ruin the excellence of the film. One thing to note for us international audience viewers who are not British, the language is very British with a lot of specific terms and you do have to have a certain grasp on that to completely understand what's being said. Now I realize that I haven't said a single word about what this is about, what the plot is, and frankly I'm not going to. I went into this blind and I couldn't be happier that I did. The fact that I didn't really know what this was about made it all the more effective to me, and I refuse to take that away from anyone else. I mean, hey, it's your decision, but for what it's worth, I would say it's better to not know. But yeah, I'd say if you're into a movie driven by strong characters and dialogue, definitely check it out. At least rent it. Which, of course, unfortunately, brings us to Sleuth of 2007. This is the title in Danish. I don't mind that, because I don't think this should be called the same thing as the 1972 movie. Or the play, because I'm sure it's better. Just FYI, there's going to be swearing in the rest of this video. Okay, perhaps I should start with the positives. The acting is fantastic, don't get me wrong. Law and Kane are just perfect, no doubt about it. And yes, the music is better. It's a lot more subtle, and it doesn't oversell anything. And also, I will admit... Oh, shit, that's actually all the positive I can really say about the movie. I suppose I could award it, like, half a positive point for the camera angles, which are definitely unique and different. But frankly, it doesn't really feel like they're accomplishing anything by being unique and different. They're just different. Like, just for the sake of it. And yes, I know, in the extras on the DVD, they talk about how, oh, the close-ups would have been making it too intense. Fine. Can we at least have more of the shots where we can tell where the people are in the shot? The characters are far less developed, and in general, this movie is in such a fucking hurry to get to where it's going, which frankly is not that exciting. Honestly, for the last 20 minutes of the movie, I could barely pay attention to it at all, and then when it finally did reach its conclusion, I was just like, that was it? What the fuck? A lot of the dialogue is now kind of 
dumb and not that interesting. The ending is one of the few places the movie allows any ambiguity where it doesn't feel the need to excessively explain everything. Honestly, this talks down to the audience almost immediately in a gesture that just screams, Hi, we don't actually have any faith in our audience's ability to think for themselves, so we're just gonna spell it out for you. The pace in general is really awkward and off. For how fast it goes at times, it grinds to a complete halt at other times, and you're just practically yelling at the screen, Get moving! To happen! Something! Please! This tries way too hard with the lines, trying to get us engaged and excited, and almost every single attempt at suspense or tension completely falls flat. Embarrassingly so. The plot is Swiss cheese with all the alluring scent of a Limburger. The set is nice and all, but it really just feels like it's there to distract us. I mean, here's the thing. If you didn't think that audiences could handle all that talking and that few characters, then you didn't have to remake a movie that was fine the way it is. In fact, I'd prefer that you didn't leave the original alone, because it's really nowhere near as dated as you might expect from a movie that's almost 40 years old by now. It holds up incredibly well, so just... leave it be. Honestly, I question the logic in even making this thing. The script was subpar. The old one isn't one of those movies that you can't watch anymore because of, you know, something's dated, or the politics of the time, or excessive racism, sexism, intolerable religious overtones, whatever. And this seems to not quite be supposed to be about the same thing as the original. I mean, I realize that that isn't an entirely uncommon practice in remakes. I mean, if you have an entirely different story to tell, just write a different script. Start from the bottom. It's a lot less awkward than trying to inject your own idea into something that had a perfect idea to begin with. I mean, according to IMDb, Pinner wrote like 80 scripts before this. True, I think some of it was TV, but still, it can't have been opening night jitters, so why not just go for a completely new script? But yeah, Sleuth, the 2007 version, I definitely say skip, even if you're a big fan of everyone involved in making it. They've done better. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.